Hello, my name is Shauna Spence and I'm a registered dietitian based in New York City. I'm going to be discussing IBS and some ways to relieve symptoms food-wise. So what is IBS? IBS stands for Irritable Bowel Syndrome. It's a gastrointestinal disorder and it affects the large intestine. Currently about 10 to 15% of Americans suffer from this disorder and it seems to be that it affects mostly women more so than men. Some symptoms of IBS can include abdominal pain, cramping, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, as well as excess gas. So at some point, all of us have experienced these symptoms, right? But when should you see a doctor? It's important to see a doctor when weight loss, unexplained vomiting, rectal bleeding can accompany these symptoms. So if you experience all of those combined, it's best to see your doctor. While the exact cause of IBS is still unknown, there have been certain triggers that most people associate with their symptoms. So these triggers include foods that they eat, foods obviously I'm gonna get into a little bit later, also stress. Stress plays a huge factor in our health, believe it or not, especially our gut health. Also hormones. So hormones might be one of the reasons why women are affected more so than men with IBS. More women report more symptoms that occur during their menstrual cycles. So what are some foods that you can eat when diagnosed with IBS? So the FODMAP diet seems to help relieve some symptoms of IBS. And FODMAP stands for fermentable, oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. So what were those words that I just said? <laughs> so they are short chain carbohydrates, and they're said to be poorly digested in our short intestine. And that's mostly for people that have IBS. For others, if you don't have these symptoms, a lot of these foods are actually good for us. So I'll go over them in a second, but I just wanna make it clear that you should only cut out these foods if you are diagnosed with IBS because many of these foods are good for our gut bacteria which we need to keep our gut healthy. So I just wanna emphasize that before anything else, before I continue. So fermentable foods, what are fermentable foods? Some examples can include sauerkraut, kimchi, um, things like yogurt, or any probiotic foods that you see on the market, those have, or those are fermentable. So those are some things that you want to avoid if you do have IBS because those are hard to digest in your system. Oligosaccharides. So what are some foods that would be considered oligosaccharides? Definitely onions, garlic, asparagus, artichoke, also legumes or beans, um, wheat, rye, things like that. So oligosaccharides, unfortunately, those are a lot of prebiotics, and we also, in addition to probiotics, we need prebiotics in our diet. But for those with IBS, that can affect their gut health. So those foods um, should be cut out of the diet. Disaccharides. So disaccharides would be dairy. <laughs> Simple as that. So dairy would include milk, yogurt, cheese. So those should be not cut out completely, but definitely reduced. So I don't like to say that food should be cut out completely, but definitely know your body and know what triggers your symptoms. So dairy seems to be a big factor in this, and dairy falls under disaccharides. Monosaccharides. <laughs> so monosaccharides would be fructose, and when you think of fructose, you probably think of fruit, and you are correct. <laughs> so you want to try to avoid fruits with high fructose levels. So certain fruits would be apples, cherries, 
mangoes, watermelon, figs, fruits like that. So anything with a high fructose level, those are the ones that you want to cut back on. And finally, polyols. So polyols are sugar alcohols, and those are found usually in sugar-free gum or your artificial sweeteners or low-calorie sweeteners, low-calorie foods. So you wanna look for, when you're shopping, anything that ends in OL. Those are usually your sugar alcohols, so you wanna try to avoid those as well.